I just think staying prepared. You know, I think, uh, you know, my whole mentality was just, you know, when uh, my name's called this year, we can show that I'm ready to go and be able to bring to the team, you know, what they need. And, you know, I feel like I was able to, you know, find a groove and just, you know, be able to build off that, continue off that, watch my mistakes from last game and just continue to grow as a player. The Dallas Mavericks get the 113-99 win inside the America Airlines Center to move to 22-18 and on the season as they win their sixth game in a row, breaking the Bulls' nine-game winning streak. This is the Gray Area right here on Kevin Gray Sports. My name is Kevin Gray. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Kevin Gray Sports. Be sure to hit that subscribe button right there for all things Kevin Gray Sports here on YouTube. You can catch me on your home of the Dallas Cowboys and Texas Rangers, 105.3 The Fan. The Dallas Mavericks moved to 22 and 18 on the season, get a 113-99 win over the Chicago Bulls. They have now won their last six games, along with seven out of their last eight. Over their past six games, the Mavericks were averaging 100 point, 108.7 points per game, while allowing just 93 points per game. In that span, Luka Doncic had an absolutely monster triple-double in this particular game as Luka Doncic went for 22 points, 14 assists, and 14 rebounds. All 14 of his rebounds were defensive rebounds in this game. Doncic becomes the first player to record a 22-point, 14-plus rebound, 14-plus assist game across the entire NBA this season. Despite the fact that Luka Doncic went 8 of 23 from the field, Doncic put together a monster night, stuffing the stat sheet with his 14 assists in this game. Josh Green was also spectacular, had 18 points, 8 of 10 from the field, living above the rim was Josh Green in this game to go along with six rebounds, had a career-high 17 points on Friday against the Houston Rockets and then set his new career-high with 18 points against a Chicago Bulls team that was extremely hot coming in, had won their last nine games in a row. DeMar DeRozan with his exploits in the Bulls, becoming one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. The Mavericks now have put together a six-game winning streak that includes wins over the Nuggets, the Golden State Warriors, and the Chicago Bulls. So you give the Mavericks a lot of credit for the defense that they are playing, especially as of late, to continue to build on the momentum that they are building right now. Now 11-8 and at home on the season. When you look at this game also, Jalen Brunson was very good. Also, he had 17 points. He went 8 of 10 from the field to go along with four, point, four assists and four rebounds. Brunson is now riding a streak of 21 consecutive games and scoring in double figures and is averaging 17.3 points per game in that 21 consecutive game double figure scoring streak. So everyone contributed to this game, including Maxi Kleber, who was really good in this game. He had a season high, 18 points to go along with four rebounds and two assists. He connected on six three-pointers, which ties a career high, which he had back in January of 2020. So you saw in this game the Mavericks do a lot of different things. Defensively got after the Chicago Bulls, holding them to under 100 points, but also offensively being able to knock down shots and getting contributions from a lot of different guys. When you go up and down the box score, Maxi Kleba had 18. Dorian Finney-Smith, who had a really nice game himself at 4 of 7 from the three-point line, he had 12 points. Dwight Powell had 10 points. Luka Doncic, as we mentioned, with the monster triple-double with 22, 14, and 14. Jalen Brunson with his 17 points. Josh Green with his 18 points. A lot of different guys doing a lot of different things. The Mavericks go 16 of 36 from the three-point line, shooting 44% from the field. They only took nine free throws, but they made all nine of their free throws in this game. The Dallas Mavericks had in this game 44 out of 88 field goals, they shot 50% from the field, had 28 assists on those 44 field goals. It was Josh Green, though, who continues to make an impact on the game with his ability to be a very good passer, his living above the rim, getting out in transition. Josh Green continues to make a name for himself and develop into the kind of player that has found a niche and a role on this team. I asked interim coach Sean Sweeney, who continues to sit in for Jason Kidd as he continues to deal with Kobe. COVID. What has been the biggest difference when it comes to Josh Green and his game and what he's been doing to be able to develop his game? Here is what Coach Sean Sweeney told me after the game. Hey, Coach, from a player development standpoint with Josh Green, what was one of the one or two things you guys wanted to focus on with him throughout his development as you guys have gotten to work with him that you've seen flourish now in his game? Um, I mean, you know, whether it's him or any of these guys, the big thing is, is as you're a young player, you're trying to understand, you know, 
what is the important team fundamental that you have to have, team fundamentals, then it goes down to your positional group, and then it goes down to you as an individual. So first it's the team, then it's you know what you have to do as a perimeter player, and then for him as an individual, um, going back to even when he was in Las Vegas coming off the national team, the first and foremost is understanding his speed and his athleticism and how he can use his body on both ends. Um, <clears throat> you know, he, he works very religiously on his shooting and his ball handling. So those are all things that stand out. But I think, you know, understanding, you know, who am I and who are my teammates is really important. And as a young player, it might take a minute to do that. But as you start to figure it out, now you can see where you can impact the game, um, you know, whether it's on the defensive end like he did in the first half or, you know, driving the ball, getting out in transition. You know, the finish he had with contact in the second half is something that he's worked on a lot. So I think, you know, that's kind of where it starts, and then you just try to build on that. So Sean Sweeney saying, look, he's learning how to use his speed and his athleticism. He's growing as a player and is learning how to use that within the team concept to become a better player. And that's extremely important for Josh Green's confidence to continue to grow, to continue to develop as a player, but more importantly, finding his role within his team and consistently building on that role night in and night out. And you're seeing that as a Mavericks fan. It makes you very excited that Josh Green is turning into the kind of player that has found a particular niche on this team, whether it be getting after it defensively, being able to make hustle plays, being able to use his high basketball IQ to find shooters in the corner for threes or to make passes to be able to make good shots into great shots. Josh Green is doing those things for the Mavericks, and it should be applauded that he continues to grow and stick with his game. I asked Josh Green after the game, I said, hey, what is it about your game over the last year that's helped you grow from a basketball IQ standpoint, from a player development standpoint, that's allowed your game to potentially grow? Here's what Josh Green told me after the game. Hey, Josh, what's been the biggest difference in your mind from a year ago to now when it comes to the development of basketball IQ, awareness, using your speed and athleticism, and how that's changed for you in your game? Um, I think just being out to just being out of play. You know, I think, you know, like I said, just, you know, with minutes obviously comes mistakes, being a younger guy, but I think being able to grow off that and, you know, see your mistakes and, um, you know, I think everyone on the staff and players wise have done like a, a great job being able to help me out, uh, give me a you know better understanding every day, learning new things. You know, obviously coach is coach kid, like, you know, arguably one of the best, uh, best point guard in, of all time. So for me, it's just, you know, picking up on as many things as I can and just continue to bring that to the court. So Josh Green saying, look, I've taken a lot of different things from a lot of different individuals. Jason Kidd being able to impart things that he has taught me and being able to grow as a player and utilizing those things night in and night out has helped him grow. And that's extremely important for the Mavericks team as they continue to build their depth. But more importantly, their confidence in their team concept when it comes to defense, getting after opponents, but also multiple guys contributing on a night-to-night -night basis. Josh Green, with those 18 points off the bench, is able to stabilize that second unit with his hustle, with his playmaking ability, and being able to get out and finish at the rim in transition. There was multiple times in this game where he had transition dunks off of alley-oops because of his hustle and his ability to run the floor and Luka Doncic and others finding him and transition to be able to finish at the rim. A very positive sign for Josh Green as he continues his growth there. As we mentioned, the Mavericks shot 44% from the three-point line in this game. Shot a perfect 9 of 9 from the free throw line. In this game, they were able to overcome a Chicago Bulls team that was really able to get back into the game, especially in the first quarter. The Mavericks had jumped out to a 10-2 lead. The Chicago Bulls made it 32-22 at the end of the first quarter, and it was back and forth from there. But the Dallas Mavericks were really able to get things started with a really nice fourth quarter start from Josh Green, who had seven of the first 10 points in the fourth quarter to really buoy things for the Dallas Mavericks to get them off to a good start. So for the Mavericks, another important win as they continue to climb up the Western Conference standings. But what's encouraging is that they have done this without Christos Porzingis, who has been out the last few games, of course, as he's dealing with the health and safety protocols and COVID-19. Jason Kidd missing the last couple of games as head coach. But this team is getting healthy as this season has gone on. They've weathered the storm of the COVID-19 outbreak that they've dealt with this team, the hardship players that they had to sign and try to acclimate into this team to be able to help stem the tide as they were figuring things out with their starters. The Mavericks now have put themselves in position to be able to move forward healthy, confident, and more importantly, 
defending teams on a consistent basis night in and night out, which is what you want to see from this team continuing to go forward. As we mentioned, a team that's only allowing 93 points per game during their six-game winning streak, continuing to climb as far as their defensive rating is concerned in the NBA, and more importantly, making Jason Kidd look very smart about the ideas that he had about coming in to help this team, not just necessarily when it comes to being better as far as their offense is concerned, but more importantly, focusing on the defensive end to allow this team that when they do struggle from the field, they can find ways to win basketball games, whether it be winning ugly games sometimes or at times being able to use their defense to win games outright. And that's exactly what they've been doing during this six-game win streak. So the Mavericks now find themselves when it's a seven of their last eight, getting contributions from a lot of different guys. The confidence is growing. Jalen Brunson saying after the game that the vibes are immaculate, not just because that they are immaculate right now, but it's because of the togetherness and the focus and the intensity of being locked in on both ends of the floor. And that is a great sign if you're a Mavericks team that no matter what, whether shots are falling or not, this team is not hanging their heads anymore. As we've seen earlier on in the season when Jason Kidd talked about the idea that this team continued to hang their heads when they miss shots, they are not doing that anymore, that they are also playing the kind of defense consistently whether or not shots are falling and being able to use that energy to be able to translate onto the offensive end. It's good stuff for the Mavericks right now who are on a very nice win streak. Their longest win streak since April of 2016. That is the historic nature of which the Dallas Mavericks are winning basketball games right now. The longest winning streak, of course, of Luka Doncic's career with the Dallas Mavericks. The Dallas Mavericks get themselves a 113-99 win inside of the America Airlines Center. They get ready to take on in their next game the the New York Knicks on the road as they travel to New York to take on Julius Randle and that bunch out in Madison Square Garden. But for now... The Dallas Mavericks 113-99 over the Chicago Bulls. They travel to New York for their next game to try and make it seven in a row when they take on the Knicks a little bit later on this week. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Kevin Gray Sports. Be sure to hit that subscribe button right there for all things Kevin Gray Sports here on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe to 105 or excuse me, subscribe to Kevin Gray Sports here on YouTube. It's been another episode of the Gray Area. I'll talk to you later. Peace.